Got News Nation now. Nikki Haley, uh, we talked about it earlier, her speech she made, the so-called state of the race speech in South Carolina, said she's not dropping out and all the rest. Now, after that speech, what she did do is she ran over to sit down for an interview with our own Blake Berman that will air in full tonight on The Hill, which, of course, is 6 p.m. Eastern time. But Blake joins us now uh, from Washington. And I said to our audience earlier, I said, you were interviewing her. I said, I'm going to get Blake on later. I'm going to see what he got out of her. So what did you get out of her? Yeah. Just spoke to Nikki Haley for about 10, 12 minutes or so. Um, and look, as, as you, uh, I, I believe, have talked about the, the state of the race speech that she, that she gave earlier today was a lot of why I'm staying in the race from her perspective, but not exactly how she's going to win it, right? Um, earlier today, Donald Trump's campaign put out a memo in which they said they are going to have enough delegates, the 1,215 needed, by mid-March, either March 12th or March 19th. So I asked Nikki Haley right off the top, and we just finished this interview a uh, minutes ago, Connell. I, I asked her, how are you going to get to 1215? What states are you going to win? I heard the why today. I didn't hear the how. And one of my takeaways was she, she, she didn't necessarily give any definitive states that she's going to win. She didn't say, we're going to win this one, that one, the next one, and so on. She said to me, look, we've got South Carolina. We're going to close the gap there as she put it. Um, then there's Michigan and Super Tuesday. So still a lot of process from Nikki Haley, but not necessarily um, a lot of answers as to how she's going to go about doing it. Uh, mm -hmm. That was one takeaway from it. Um, you know, I asked her, um, as I just scanned through some of my notes here, I, one of the things that I, I took note of from her speech earlier today was she said, Connell, she was going to stay in the race until every last vote was count was counted. So if you do the math, the last primary race is, is June 4th. There's a handful of states. Donald Trump, uh, his trial starts March 25th. Legal observers believe that's going to take about two months or so to, to litigate and get through. Okay, so count the days with me. That's, that's right around June 4th, right? So I point blank asked Nikki Haley, is your strategy to stay in the race in case Donald Trump gets convicted? She wouldn't say yes. She didn't necessarily say that's my strategy. What she did say was that she, you know, she wanted to go around the, the country and make sure that everyone's voices are heard. She noted that he was, is going to be in court the next four months, March, April, May, and June. Um, and she said all he's doing is talking about himself. I got to tell you, one of the most uh, striking parts of the interview for me, you'll remember, Connell, today there was this moment where Nikki Haley paused. She was brought to tears when talking about her husband. Her husband is serving overseas. Um, and Donald Trump last week made fun of, where's her husband? And he, he got a lot of pushback. Well, her husband's serving overseas. He's, he's part of the armed forces. He's part of the military serving. Donald Trump gave sort of an apology, but, but not really a, a full apology. And so I asked Nikki Haley about that moment today where she was brought to tears and whether or not she's forgiven uh, Donald Trump for what he said. We'll play the full answer in, in, in its entirety coming up on the Hill. But what I will tell you is it was clearly the most emotional that she got. Um, it was, I would say, the most forceful that she got. And it is obviously something that has stuck with her. By the hmm. way, I also pressed her on this idea of um, does she think Donald Trump has dementia, right? She, she, brought, she consistently brought up today this idea that the presidency is the single most pressure-packed job there is. No one would disagree with that, I don't think. Um, but she argued that is why we don't need someone who's prone to dementia. And so I asked her also, point Blake, do you think Donald Trump has dementia right now at this moment? Same for Joe Biden right now at this moment. Again, she wouldn't necessarily say yes, but she's starting to lay that argument. And that's part of her, her pitch um, as she heads into her home state. Well, that's a really good job. Like, you gave us just enough. For you. you didn't give it all away, but we have now we have a lot of reasons to watch because I'm, I'm very curious about how she would have answered those questions. I think people look and they say, why are you guys talking so much about um, Nikki Haley? We all know the polls, and she's down 30 points at her home state, and Trump is probably, you know. I, I asked her, I asked her, by the way, I said, you know, if you look at it in modern politics, to be a nominee, you have to win, you win your home state. Bush won Texas. Uh, Romney won Massachusetts. He was living there at the time. Let's go through right. it. McCain, Arizona, Donald Trump, New York. I, I brought this to her with the numbers. And I asked her to the casual observer who says, wait a minute, why are you losing your home state 20 or 30 points? What would you say to that person? Right? It's a reasonable question. Um, and, and that's part of our... Well, I think the reason we talk about her, I mean, I said this earlier, but I, I think the story of the election might very well be not whether Nikki Haley's the nominee. She almost 
definitely will not be and most likely will not be. But what happens to our voters? I mean, th thank you for watching and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.